Hello, welcome to this video for the MOOC MOOC online course happening in this August of 2012. My name is Dominic Lukesh, and I'd like to talk to you about space and why I think it is the final frontier for online education. And as part of that rumination on space, I'd like to make a bold ish proposal for flipping the school year to overcome some of the limitations uh, of space for online education. So why is space so important uh, in schooling, learning and education? What role does it play? And when we say space, we trot out all these analogies at the drop of a hat, really. Uh, we talk about or space to think, or headspace, or room to grow, um, and all sorts of other types of spaces in a metaphorical sense. But I, when I say space, mean the real space. Uh, I don't even mean actually the space up there. I mean the space um, in which we learn. And uh, so before I talk a bit more about the traditional sense of space, let's have a look at what happens when we take the space online. So again, when we talk about online education, we often come up with all of these metaphors. We talk about virtual spaces or virtual rooms, chats, uh, virtual learning environments and, and so on. But again, the actual learning person is sitting in some sort of a space and the space very often looks something like this. There's a computer, with an internet connection, hopefully, maybe some books, some notebooks, a lamp, a chair, a desk. And that just looks quite nice and cozy and inviting. You say, okay, well, now I have this world of education open before me through internet, and I can choose when and how I learn, and I don't have to dress up in a particular way, I don't have to get up at a particular time. Uh, I, I don't have the stresses of commuting, I'm wasting the time on commuting and other resources. So, you know, what's not to love? This is really quite a nice way of doing learning, you might say. And that's true. But there's a flip side. On the other, when you turn the camera around, very often you may see something like this. There's kids playing on the floor behind you, or there's uh, animals running there, or you're... Uh, your other family members, your spouse, have other demands on your time. Maybe if it's at work, you know, it's your co-workers. And the problem is, you don't look any different when you're doing the learning, the sort of educational things in that space than when you're doing other things in that space, like playing games or just reading something on online. Um, so it's not very clear to the other people uh, in that environment that they should leave you alone, that you're one of focus on your learning. Or maybe it's not just that they don't know, they just, uh, it doesn't feel to them like this is a serious thing. They, f they feel you're in their space, so you should be part of their conversations, their activities, and so on. And, and there are many uh, guides that tell you how to avoid these issues. You, know, you should negotiate with your family and the people who live in that same environment. They certain, dedicate certain hours to doing that and so on and so forth. But some people find it difficult to do. Uh, the other people may not want to play along or sometimes, you know, it's just hard to have that discipline and in a way you're giving up some of that flexibility. So what often happens to online students is that they feel very stressed out. Uh, uh, and it can even get worse with the sort of connectivist type of MOOC that doesn't have perhaps exact assignments where people are expected to uh, engage in more kind of free-flowing uh, learning conversations and making connections through a personal learning network, which uh, can be very uncomfortable to some people. And uh, so they're spending a lot of cognitive time, a lot of effort and, and time on just managing their life, you know, thinking about this is what I'm going to have to do first, this is uh, making lists, they're uh, making schedules, worrying, spending a lot of time worrying about things. And this takes a physical toll as well as a mental toll. So they're so tired after a while that they don't have time to take any advantage of this, these opportunities that the online uh, learning space 
or the the space that you enter through the through to the online world offers to them now on the other hand the traditional space that we all know and many of us hate uh, is a very safe dedicated space when you're sitting behind a desk with other people or also sitting behind a desk and watching a teacher um, you're obviously doing a school educational things well those things may be quite dull and boring and uninspiring and demotivating they may not have that much to do with learning but at least that's all you're doing you don't you have the opportunity to do nothing nothing but that one thing and obviously there's other things that people do in the classroom they may be you know texting repassing notes staring out the window and uh, not that much happens that really has to do with the curriculum for many people and and certainly between classes uh, there isn't a lot of conversation going about oh that was such an interesting formula we just learned in, in math class so it perhaps isn't the, the best environment for learning in general but at least uh, if that's what you want to do nobody disputes that that's what you're doing you're doing a learning thing people are not saying okay well come play with us or come uh, you know cook us dinner or something like that and uh, of course even you yourself even though perhaps you know the environment itself is kind of dull and and hard to learn anything in uh, but you have a feeling when at the end of the day while well, you've spent some time doing learning things and therefore you know you've done education but you could spend a day online and not really feel like you've accomplished that much even though you may have learned a lot more than you would have in the classroom so here's we have these kind of two opposing poles it's completely free form self-directed learning and then a completely so sort of straight jacketed learning where you have to fit into a mold uh, of others choosing which works well if that mold fits you but as molds are wont to do they generally don't fit everybody and probably probably they don't fit even most people so could we could we find a happy medium between these two extremes and my suggestion is that yes we can do it through one little analogical device and that is flipping the school year that I talked about at the beginning and uh, this is based on the idea of flipping the classroom and that's been getting gaining a lot of traction recently and the idea is that the things you do in the classroom typically you will do outside the classroom the drudgery of listening to somebody telling you about something or or reading or copying and writing and then you use the classroom for um, the kind of human activities of learning the interaction with your teacher and so on and so forth and and lots of people have criticized this idea that it's not that new it's really just kind of a different kinds of homework but there is certain power behind it and it goes a long way bf skinner actually had that idea around his teaching machines and people criticize that for being kind of outlandish behaviorist nonsense uh but his idea wasn't that that will do education but is that they will actually take over the mechanical aspects of what happens in the classroom take, taking attendance doing quizzes rote learning and that will be done with these machines and then the teacher's time will be free for just that thing that only the te the human being can do you know skinner said that the teaching is an art uh he, he said that explicitly so that's kind of a you know from the 1960s an idea of a flipped classroom of, of in a way and then now with the advent of online video and all these other open resources you know the, the classroom is for uh, right for the flipping but why not flip the whole school year what would that look like well we don't have to be rude about that and just gonna say we don't like you school year you know we perhaps don't but uh, have let's flip it around and see what it looks like when it's the other way uh, up and that could be quite scary you could just go ah oh, what are we doing it could be messy because we don't know what's going to happen but perhaps the tasty results would be worthwhile now what would that look like well once you know what that the analogy is, is with flipping the classroom it probably isn't that difficult to imagine what a flipped school year would be i mean it's most of the time that we spend in that sort of classroom that sort of nine to whatever 3 p.m and then doing our homework that's a structured 
sort of five hours a day, five days a week sort of thing that happens most of the year. Well, that would be freed. I mean, all that time we just we'd be using it for this online uh, connectivist learning. It doesn't have to be even online, but self-directed, where the students are and the learners are following uh, their interests and they're exploring and uh, they interact with peers they seek out resources rather than being given them and they kind of do it in, in a way that suits them in a way that motivates them and that makes it things interesting for them and that's what would be happening all the time and maybe even people might be going to work at the same time but we still need that dedicated space sometimes it's you know it's so we don't get dissolved in this sort of unbounded um, unfinished learning in some ways because obviously sometimes some learning is bounded in the in a sense that you know we want to learn specific things we may want to do a lab or acquire a skill that is maybe quite difficult to do on one's own and sometimes even being in a classroom with a bunch of other people helps in some ways or it may help a particular person so these things could be done in small doses because the problem is in schools at the moment we just waste all of that time there's you know there's so many hours that we just gonna sit there because that's what we do in a school year but we don't have to do it we just people just pick the odd weekend extended weekend perhaps getting together for some sort of a camp or you know a couple of away days of doing these sorts of things quite intensively and in a focused way and then in the summer maybe spend you know two two week summer schools somewhere with again quite focused intensive on around a particular topic and uh, get that dedicated space, dedicated time for maybe honing skills that require some coaching and, and, and uh, uh, things like that. Of course, uh, socializing with people as well. And that's, I think, would be quite, uh, quite a powerful way and, um, of going about this sort of thing. Now, when I first thought about this, of this analogy, I said, well, this is also brand new and then I realized well it isn't at all it's actually exactly what's been happening for you know, millennia and it's happening at, as we speak but we don't really think of it as kind of a mainstream legitimate way of doing education I mean this first the idea of that the school year is kind of screwy as it is, is isn't new there people are talking about uh, the agrarian origins of the school year and saying well you know the reason we have these two months in the summer is that the, the kids can go and and uh, plow the fields and, and take care of their farm animals, which, you know, whether it's true or not, is neither here nor there. But, but there's actually no good reason why the school year should be done the way it is. And if we look if, uh, around the world, we see that, that it isn't always the same, done the same way. So that's one thing, that, 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 that in, one way in which this is not new. Well, there's also this whole homeschooling movement that already is doing all, pretty much exactly that. Uh, it's sort of self-directed, learning most of the time interspersed with these little sort of bursts of maybe concentrated activities uh, little getting groups little groups getting together for a particular learning purpose and and of course uh, it's not at all new in the sense uh, of the sort of universities have been doing that for a long time with their extramural extramural programs where the uh, the students study on their own and then they come come in for a couple of weekends and a couple of weeks in the summer for again for seminars and things like that even though very often those experiences are kind of luxury not all that fun but uh, but that model is kind of there but it goes even further back with apprenticeships and now it's called work-based learning and, and things like that but that's how people used to learn pretty much everything they would be apprenticed to somebody and uh, maybe these days when we talk about work-based learning most of the time you spend just at work learning from life and uh, your supervisors and your peers and then you maybe spend one day a week in school or, and have some or have some sort of weeks when you just do uh do sort of schooly things so again that's already happening but for some reason when we think about this as kind of doing it this is how education how schooling would be done at every level yeah, it seems like completely crazy and obviously schools play other roles than uh, just places for learning spaces for learning they keep the kids in while the parents are at work which <laughs> is you know an important function for society so perhaps 
uh, this, this will only work from a certain age onwards. Uh, but um, you know, maybe even within the schools, we could free the schools up a little bit away from this sort of class subject-based learning. And again, this is not new. This has been uh, going on for a long time. You know, just think of Montessori and, and, and other uh, innovators uh, of that mold. So again, this is not new, but I, I was quite inspired by the idea, by this uh, metaphor of flipping the school year just like we flipped the classroom. So maybe, even though I don't expect an exact policy to be forthcoming from anywhere based on this, but perhaps it can be the start of, a, of an interesting conversation about things that we already know. And uh, seeing them in a new light might perhaps give us a new impetus for trying them in different ways. So that is the end of my MOOC MOOC video. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, tweet at TechCheck. Thank you and goodbye.